Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash Cairo Business Mojo. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle Player, or MP3 player. Welcome to the Cairo Business Mojo podcast, where we deconstruct the methods, marketing, and mindset of successful business people and chiropractors from around the world. And now your host, Dr. Richard Day. Hello, hello. Yes, I am Dr. Richard Day, and this is the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast. Thank you once again for spending some of your time with us here today. And time management is the subject of what we're going to talk about today, at least a little sliver of it, and that is the power of saying no. We are inundated in our lives with requests to do things, to go out with our buddies, to help a friend move, to do all kinds of things. It might be from a friend or a coworker. You never know, but the requests, they keep on coming. And one of the things we can do is learn to say no. Now, I learned early on in my practice that once I opened a practice, I became the target of every salesperson in the world who wanted to come in and sell me their office supplies, uh, carpet cleaning, you name it. And... I got a lot of practice at how to say no from that. Uh, I started off being really a pleaser in life. I've talked about this before, and I didn't want to say no, and I had a hard time saying no, but boy, did I learn to develop that skill. So I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into that today and talk about the power of saying no. You know, what do I have in common with Mark Cuban, Richard Branson, and Mark Zuckerberg? It's that I have 24 hours in a day available to me just like they do. It is the great equalizer time. It's what we all have in common. And I don't care how much money you have or power or other things. We all get 24 hours in a day. And that's why this power to say no becomes so important. Now, it's hard. It's really hard for a couple of reasons. We don't want to let anybody down. I think it's just human nature to want to be that way. We want to be the one, hey, I got your back. Sure, can you help me move? (laughs) Well, maybe that's not so hard to say no to, but, you know, if someone asks you for help or you want to come out tomorrow night, a bunch of us are going out for drinks, or you want to meet me for coffee in the morning, you just, you want to say yes. You don't want to disappoint people to want to say yes. But saying yes can really get you into trouble if you do it too often. You can commit to buying things you never wanted to buy. You can stay in a relationship that you never should have stayed in. And you can just get yourself into really a bad habit of just saying yes when you should be saying no. So how do you start saying no if this is something that you're not used to doing? Well, like I mentioned earlier, one of the first things I did was learn to say no or rather no thank you to salespeople. They'll either come calling in your office if they haven't already or they will come calling on the phone. Either way, you're going to hear spiel after spiel and you're going to want to say no. And I would typically very politely listen and just say no thank you and not talk anymore. So they would say, when's a good time to get together for whatever? Eh, no thank you. Well, what do you mean no thank you? And I, as a formal former salesperson, I can tell you that what salespeople are supposed to do is overcome objections. So you say, as soon as you start providing objections, they just start overcoming them and they've got a lot of practice at it. Well, now's not a good time for me. Well, when would be a good time? Well, I'm just not interested in your pens that you're selling. Well, where do you currently get your pens from? What I found is that no matter what I said, it wasn't good enough. They were going to overcome this objection. But a simple no thank you was really hard for them to overcome. So do you want to donate to the such and such? No thank you. And I do donate to good causes. Don't get me wrong on that. But there are certain people that call and certain agencies that call. For example, out-of-town companies will often call and want to know if we would like to sponsor the local high school football team. Well, I I deal directly with the local high schools and other schools in my community, and the middleman is calling from California or Texas or somewhere, and they're going to make a profit over off of whatever I give. So I'm not interested in talking to them, and I don't want to go through the explanation. I just say, no, thank you. So try that one. It actually can be fun after a while because you get a lot of practice at it and uh, they aren't quite what to do, sure what to do with themselves. And I get it. We're all out trying to hustle and make a buck and salespeople are no different, but they can actually be costing you money if they're taking your time. During the startup phase, my wife and I said no to anything and everything that was not essential to our mission, was not mission critical. 
we had one goal, and that was to get open. And once we got open, it was to get as profitable as quickly as possible because we were really in business to not go out of business for the first six months. And so there was really we had too much on our plate and anything else we wanted to do came at the cost of something else that we needed to do. So it made it really easy for us to say no. And later on when we were profitable and things were going well, we sort of kept that mindset. Now, you don't want to turn all of your friends off. Your friends can be a a great resource for the practice and friends are friends, right? I mean, we've all known people and have friends in our lives and the point of life is not to not have friends and care about people. But you certainly learn to become selective with that time. And I've mentioned this before, but you're the sum of the five people you spend the most most time with. And so we really became very selective in who we spend our time with um, as a result of, of what we had to do to get our practice open. When you're up and running, and a lot of you I know have been up and running for a while, but stop and think about the people, and let's start with patients, who are the negatives in your life. Those 20% of the folks that come in that really eat up 80% of your time. And you know who I'm talking about. They're the folks that are high maintenance in one form or another, and they are really just costing you too much of your time, a disproportionate amount to the 20% of the patients that they represent. So it's focus on the 80% that are great and low maintenance and let the 20% go. And this isn't just in patients, but take a step back and look at the people in your life. If there are high maintenance people, those people who are an emotional drain, time drain, or both, or any kind of a drain, it's time to step back and say no to them. Start with those folks immediately because you're going to be earning your time back right off the bat. Now, what language do you use to do this? Well, I mentioned saying no thank you. That's the one that I used for salespeople because I really didn't need to say more than that. Uh, say, I'd love to, but I'm not able to right now. And this does beg the question, so when is a good time? I'm not sure. And that's kind of where I would leave it. And all of this I said without angst or anger, and I think the tone is really um, important in all this. And certainly with a friend, I, I would never say anything in anger that I couldn't do it or anything like that. But it's a little bit easier to sort of let loose on salespeople or other other people. And I was always very respectful and very nice and polite about the whole thing. Um, sometimes you can give a compliment. Now, this is a tricky one. I don't recommend this all the time, but they'll call it the sandwich or the Oreo technique where you say, I love what you're selling here. I think it's great. Or I love of whatever you're talking about, it's great. But right now I can't do it, but I think what you're doing is great. And this is a cheesy, really basic version, but uh, the way it works is sometimes in giving criticism of others, this technique can be applied um, in that respect. So it would go something like this. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I think you're really great. I think you're doing a great job here. There's just this one issue we have to work on over here. If we can get some progress there, then I think everything will be where we want it to be. But overall, we think everything's going great. This can be used when you're sitting down with an employee to have a review or just about any situation where you have to talk about something negative. You want to sandwich it in between a couple of layers of things that are positive. So that's another way that you can sort of soften the blow and the language when you do tell someone no. So what are the benefits to saying no? Well, you really control your time when you learn to say no. And remember, Time is a finite resource. You're not getting any more of it. So the more that you can control, the more ahead of the game you are. And I would call this a multiplier. We're always looking for some way to get 10 times the productivity out of our day. This is a strong multiplier. It keeps you focused on the prize or your goal or whatever it is. But when you clear out all that background noise and other things that you're committed to, you can really give yourself the time you need to focus on the important things to you. It keeps you from being exploited. Hey, if you're the guy that, hey, I always got your back and I'll be there and I'll take care of you. Yeah, it's it's a good feeling to be that guy for everyone else. But you can also be exploited and taken advantage of. So this keeps that from happening. Another thing is that it really forces others to respect your time. You'll find that the offers to do things or requests to do things come less frequently once people get a few no's. And I always say thank you for inviting me but I can't make it if it's something I can't make uh, or don't want to make. But people begin to respect the fact that, hey, you have other things going on and there's things that you're doing. And it also sweetens the power of when you do say yes, because that yes is more special. You're just not saying yes out there to everything and everyone. And this is a good one. I think that it 
protects your personal integrity and really helps your moral com- compass. So there's a lot of temptations in life all across the board. And when you really know how to say no to things and have no trouble saying no, it c- helps keep you on the straight and narrow, which is always a good thing. So I hope this little nugget of information was useful to you. Go out and have a great day and we'll talk to you next time. Thank you for listening to the Cairo Business Mojo podcast. Go to CairoBusinessMojo.com for show notes on today's episode and jump on over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and review if you enjoy the show.